Welcome to 2022, and thank you for tuning into Slave Foods' first show of the new year. Today, our special guest is Tracy McWhorter, MPH, who is the founder of the new 10 Million Black Women Movement, with the goal of producing 1 million Black vegan women a year for the next 10 years. For more on the movement, watch this. All right, so um, hopefully you, you guys were able to hear that. Um, but again, welcome to the new year. And this is the Slave Fruit Project, which is a unique nonprofit where two African-American physicians, Dr. Columbus Batiste and Dr. Eric Walsh, emergency room physician and doctor of public health, explore the role of racism as a unique form of stress and the weaponization of food in the creation of health disparities in the African-American communities, irrespective of income. They discovered that eating a whole food, plant-based diet in urban communities is possible and is the key to eliminating health disparities. For tonight's conversation, we have Dr. Tracy McWhorter, who returns to the show as a featured special guest so that doctors can discuss her program, The 10 Million Black Vegan Women. Tracy is a best-selling author, award-winning public health nutritionist, and vegan trailblazer. Uh, Tracy founded the 10 Million Vegan Black Woman, and the goal of this initiative is to help 1 million Black women go vegan each year for the next 10 years so we can change our health paradigms now and for generations to come. On this episode, you will discover how you or someone you love can join the movement of 10 million Black vegan women and how to make your health resolutions successful. As always, the Slave Food team thanks you for your support. Please continue to spread the word about the Slave Food Project and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Thanks, Nanette. Tracy, how are you? How is it that the clock click turns over another year and you look younger? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. What's going right back, on? Right back at you. Oh. <laughs> the, the power of greens, the power of veganism, right? Healthy eating. Yeah. How are y'all doing? Oh, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good amidst all the chaos. Yeah. I'm still yeah. good. I'm still good. How about you, Eric? Well, for me, it, it's, it's super chaos at this point. Um, as we were trying to hold everything down during this pandemic, I do believe it's the last leg of this thing. Um, but we'll see. Um, so we was still a lot going on, but um, holding it, holding in, and um, hanging in and hoping for a wonderful year. Um, yeah. And I really love your initiative. I think that is so beautiful. One million a year for ten years is a great piece of uh, a great way to do the math. Uh, so we want to support you any way we can. Someone reached out to me this week about you. Saw you were going to be on, and, and someone in LA was like, "Hey, I see you." and They've gone vegan, and it's a black woman gone vegan, and was showing me their garden in their backyard with broccoli oh, and collard greens, and oh, I was so impressed. So you're making an impact for sure. Thank you, thank you. That's fantastic. I love that. Well, it's great to be back with y'all. Yeah, I mean, the last time I'm gonna tell you, 
you killed it the last time you were on so we were just chomping at the bit to bring you back here it was one of our highest rated shows everyone just loved it it took off like wildfire i know that you and milton changed lives just by you simply being on the show here so we're appreciative thank but, you uh, thank you for having me i mean you know one of i really I mean, of course i remember the show and it was um you know having milton on milton and i have known each other for almost 30 years probably now wow. coming up on that and been working together so and then you know um just i think it was a rare occasion for us to be on together and to be on with both of you and just to feel immediately comfortable because we've all been doing this work a very long time we're all passionate and committed yeah. And so we could re just relax and have a conversation among friends who are passionate about, you know, and professionals who are passionate yeah. about this work. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, I, I like I, we were joking behind stage a little bit. There is that sometimes I get these like surges of thoughts and I was sitting there scouring, reading through a lot of your the information with the uh, 10 million vegan black women. Mm -hmm. And I just was overwhelmed. I love it's so packed with rich with information. And I know we only have a short amount of time. We're going to dive into this because we have yeah. New Year, we have the refresh, yeah. we have the why. And I'm going to tell you, one of the things I love with this is that we're going to go through some of your tips, right? Okay. So for the audience right here, because I think it's a great way for us to dig into the meat of this. And so step one, know your why. That's 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 huge. That's actually pretty yeah. deep, simply yeah. right there. So with this program, with 10 Million Black Vegan Women, it's a new nonprofit that we started. And it, and it was um, because of the success we had with the 10,000 Black Vegan Women program we did in 2020 and then 2021. And so I wanted to expand that. Um, and, and we can talk a little bit more about that later if you want. But in the 10,000 Black Vegan Women um, program that we first started in 2020, we had a 21 day program. And that was, uh, you know, getting 10,000 black women together online to go vegan together. And we actually got 15,000 women and we all went vegan together. And the first step. So for that 21 days, that very first week was all about knowing your why. That is the first step. You must, for me, that's how I teach it. And my mantra is liberate your mind and your mouth will follow, right? Mm -hmm. Because to me, it starts in your mind. You can have mm -hmm. all the good, delicious vegan foods you want, but if you aren't, if you aren't solid in why you are doing this, then you know you're gonna be enticed, right? You don't mm -hmm. have a foundation to stand on. And so for me, it's not just that you want to be vegan, it's why you want to be vegan. Mm -hmm. Is it because you want to deal with some weight issues? Is it because mm -hmm. you wanna deal with some health issues? Is it because you you know want to age better? I mean, whatever the reason is, what is the reason, right? Like what is that thing that is going to motivate you that you can write on a sticker and put on your mirror that you can tell people, this is why I'm doing it and I'm working backwards from there, right? And so that's what you go back to. That's your solid foundation. And then, you know, I get, you know, I'm sure for both of you, you might still at this point in your vegan lives get some crazy questions while do you ever miss meat or do you ever eat cheese? Like they never ask smokers, do you miss cigarettes? <laughs> Or ex smokers or ex <laughs> you miss, but they ask us, right? You Always. must. You must. Always. And I'm just like, no, I don't. And <laughs> it's not, I know why I'm doing this. That went away a long, long, long time ago because my foundation is strong, you know? Yeah. So that's where it is. That's what that is. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, that's what I talk to patients about all the time is really understanding your why. It's like your anchor, it's your yeah. center point that mm -hmm. you come back to on a regular basis. And I always describe to him, I say, listen, many of us don't like to go work. I mean, we like our work, but we work. Why do we work? Because right. we want to maintain a certain lifestyle. We want to be able to provide for our, our family. We mm -hmm. want to be able to have a roof over our heads. That's our why. So it mm -hmm. drives us towards that goal when we don't feel like it, right? Yes. And that's the yes. key, is when you don't yes. feel like getting up in the morning, that's you right. get up because you have bills to pay. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> When I worked in um, addiction medicine and I used to do the nicotine program at the VA, um, Loma Linda VA hospital, 
and we would do the you know work with the smokers with those veterans um i would have them actually just one of the things i would do it i have, have them take an index card mm -hmm. and write on one side of it the why mm -hmm. why do you want to quit and many of them would say things like i want to be alive to see my granddaughter because they had yeah. to write 20 of them one for each cigarette in a box so you had to write mm -hmm. 20 of them and say, i want to be alive to see my granddaughter graduate from high school or college or whatever or i want to be there when my so-and-so gets married or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and then on the other side we'd have them write a motivational thought to support it and of course, you know, a lot of times I tell them, you know, use a Bible verse, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and mm -hmm. just read the card as a reminder. The right. why is it, it, you have to have the why ever in front of you to keep you centered. So I think it's powerful that the whole first week you do is the why, because that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we do no food. We do no food that week. It's all focusing wow. on all activities around the why. Yeah, that's that's and I love that um, the motivational um, quotes as well. I might incorporate that um, as well, because in addition, because I, I think that's powerful, too, as a as a, you know, they go together. They but, do. you know, even I mean, as a physician, when I look at this and the why I, I, I made a lot of assumptions. I assume part of the why you did this is because of the stark health disparities that exist. The why you did this was because of the stark, the successes in really yeah. attacking those health disparities from the program, the platform of what you did already in the 10,000 10, uh, women. Yeah. yeah, we had huge, huge health benefits. And I know these are not a surprise to you all. If you see, if, if folks go to 10 million black vegan women .org, it's and they scroll down the benefits that the women got are on uh you know they're, they're a graphic on our page and i mean phenomenal results right so more than 80 percent of the women completed the entire program meaning they ate 100 percent vegan they went 21 days all the way through um and um i don't i don't actually don't have the, the stats in front of me but i will the exact stats but women lost weight, lowered their cholesterol, um, uh, felt, um, had more energy, um, yes. some were able to reduce their medications for diabetes and high blood pressure. Um, wow. Some liked cooking more. Um, some had more mental clarity. Um, um, we also had, a free, had free fitness classes. And 30% of the women, actually, I think it was 32% of the women, took the, fit, the fitness wow. classes as well right online, online fitness classes yeah, yeah absolutely i'm gonna tell you I'm, gonna tell you I'm a data guy i didn't start off as a researcher but i love numbers yeah. and so i have the numbers in front of me right now okay so, good right? and so <laughs> and so it was phenomenal eric i'm telling you man we could write this stuff up of what she did right now and so 82 percent completed the entire 21 day kickstart 80 percent ate 80 to 100 percent of their meals completely vegan they had nearly 70 percent 68 lost weight 67% improved their, their health, the general health. 61% ate more vegetables. And as we know, it's the quality of the food that you're eating, which is so important. And as a result of that, 52% had more energy, which we're all, we're living in this depressed state and fatigue. And so that's so extremely important. 46% enjoyed cooking more, which means that they got the full complement yes. of the aroma and, mm -hmm. and activity from standing. 37% lowered their blood pressure. And there is a blood pressure crisis, especially yeah. among those of African descent. Uh, 36 percent, uh, 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 they gain mental clarity. And this is something mm -hmm. we hear oftentimes. This is extremely mm -hmm. important, right? Your decision making uh, capacity. 33 percent participate in the activity classes and 23 percent lower their cholesterol, which means they reduce their chance of having to come and see me. Right. And this is 14 days of eating vegan, not 21 days of eating Whoa. vegan, 14 days. Right. So these women were committed, um, dedicated, and what is it? So thank you very much for reading those stats. And 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 what's not captured um, in that, although we do have some testimonials on the page, is that we we did post pre and post survey, right? So we asked the women to give us feedback and to give us comments on. Um, the you know other things beyond those you know general health markers and so most of the women talked about the fact that they were able to stick to it because there was a community of like-minded black women doing it with them right so community is 
for me, that's the key. That's how I did it 35 years ago with my mother and my sister in this big black community of vegans in DC. So I know the power of community, right? And so even online, we can do that. I love it. I love it. I love it because then and you And it's free, and you know? So you can't beat that. You can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat that, you know? There's a lot of people out there suffering still coming out of 2020 with job loss. And so the ability yeah. to have someone provide valuable information that costs a lot, actually, yeah. is yeah. Um, immeasurable. But this step two, liberate your mind and your, your mouth will follow. I, this is good. What do yeah. you mean by this? Yeah. So, so that's my mantra, as I mentioned. Um, and what I mean by that is um, while you are doing all of the, while you're doing our, our free 21 day program or, or any program, whatever you are doing to, you know, eat more uh, vegan food, to add more whole plant-based foods to your diet, right? So those steps that you're taking, you have to continue to work on your mind. So Knowing your why is the first step is how, you know, how to do that. But even if you slip up, you know, you backslide, a lot of people will just quit. Right. And they think that uh, I messed up, you know, I got, I, you know, I failed. But when you liberate your mind and your mouth will follow, what that means is while you were, while you slipped up, while you were doing it right, you know, if you take one step forward, two steps backwards, you continue to read, you continue to read books about veganism, you continue to, to browse cookbooks, recipes online, follow your favorite vegan influencers, watch vegan documentaries, talk to people who are vegan, because all of that stuff is working in the background in symphony, right, with the physical steps that you are taking to go vegan. So that your, your mind has to be working. Your mind has to be working in the background, right? And that's what I mean by liberate your mind and your mouth will follow. So you don't quit. You don't, you don't fail. If you, you, know, you, you slip one day and you eat cheese and you eat meat, you just start again the next day and you continue. What the continuum is, is working on that why and working on that, um, you know, that foundation, the books the the talking to people the interacting on communities you know online communities in-person communities all of that is working on your mind in concert so it's not just the food but people focus on what food they're giving up but there's so much to how you transition right and your mind is key so i hope that i hope i've explained that well but that's what i mean by you liberate your mind you you continue to work on your mind while you go through this transition process i want i wanted to um, plug in something else i learned doing addiction medicine and that was um uh they used to say relapse is a part of recovery yeah relapse is a part of recovery so what you what you, you know, even when i speak to patients today that are trying to give up cigarettes or whatever mm -hmm. i say if you fail um, you do not start again from the same place. You start with experience. You start yeah. knowing what it is that caused you to trip up. And sometimes that's valuable to know, you know what, I'm much more likely to go back to eating meat if I'm in this setting or around these people or mm -hmm. if I'm feeling this way, because that's something you can learn and circumvent completely so that you don't slip up the next time until yeah. you've just completely formed a new habit and, and you won't go back to that thing. Exactly. And that's what you're doing. You are you. These are the steps to form a new habit. Right. And it and it um, it takes the time that it takes. But usually um, it is not going to take your lifetime. That's what people think. Right. I'm struggling to go vegan forever. It's going to be a struggle forever. But it's not. It's going to take a short a shorter period of time. It can be 21 days. It can be a year. It can be six months. It can be three months. There's a finite period of time, and at that point, it's on. You're vegan. I'll, I'll chime in that one of the things that, that was so interesting is we all kind of have different perspectives when we read it. And so when I read this, I immediately thought, you know, your mind is so powerful and that when you liberate your mind really from a standpoint of meditation or prayer or thoughtful reflection, that we know the power of the prefrontal cortex. We know the power of, of being centered in that moment that now your ability to make better decisions improves. We know that studies have really reflected on that, that now the power to make the change improves that now you free yourself as your mind begins to reflect and become at peace there, that now your mouth is gonna follow. 
<laughs> and you, yeah. can, you might start to speak differently. You might start to eat differently and do certain things as you become centered um, in a, a power that's greater than yours, but at least reflecting on meditation through meditation and prayer. You know what? Yeah. This, I, I like, I love that. Um, and um, one of the things that that makes me think about, and it is good that people, you know, people have different perspectives when they read this. I mean, of course, that's going to happen. As, and especially both of you with your expertise, you have a different, you, you can have a different take on it as well. That's really helpful for me to think about when I talk about it again. But also, it just reminds me that veganism actually led me to meditation, not the other way around. So me being vegan, um, actually expanded my uh, sense of peace and my sense of freedom. So I actually, after I became vegan, I started to meditate. I actually was a yoga teacher in my 20s. And that was because I started to look into other healthful practices. Um, and, you know, when I was in grad school, I was teaching uh, yoga on the side to, you know, in the, in the, uh, for the school athletic department. So, but that, but but veganism led me to that. That's great. I, I love it. I love it. All right. So next up, we have what? Step number three: choose a date and begin. Choose a yes. date and begin. Yes. And this is a really, this is a really simple step, um, but it's important because uh, for me, choosing a date to begin is just a few things, right? So it gives you something that you can put on your calendar, right? You can say, I'm going to start when this 21 day program starts, or I'm going to start on my birthday. I'm going to start on the new year. You give yourself a date and you don't want it to be too far ahead because you'll have so many distractions and you may, you know, decide not to do it. So you want to give yourself a date that's comfortable for you that you can get ready to start or that you're excited about. Um, and but typically i tell people not to do it on a day that they would uh, that they'd otherwise be looking forward to indulging right so i typically don't suggest people start on new years or around the holidays or on their birthday um and i and i suggest that they pick another day that might be meaningful or that doesn't have any other meaning right when they're selecting a day but i think it's important to to make a decisive you know, stance and say, this is the day that I'm going to start this process. Hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. I, I, yeah, I used to, I, before I would always kind of tell people, don't wait until the Monday or whatever else. But I was recently reading some psychological, some studies by psychologists, and they were reflecting on the fact that people like to look towards some sort of date where it separates okay. their former selves from their future yeah. selves. Yeah. Which is why New Year's becomes so powerful for many people and why there's like this rush to kind of uh, engage folks in their behavioral change. Um, and so it, it ends up being what I love about what you're doing is that you're tailoring it to the individual and you're giving them parameters to help them make the themselves the best version of themselves they can be. And that's yeah. it. Yes, absolutely. Like it. Like it. All right. Let's see here. Step number four. <laughs> Find get your people. people. Get your yeah, people. Get your people. <laughs> like we do it right now. We are we are our people. Yes. So it's all about not having to go alone, right? Um, find your community. And it's you know, it's so easy to do online. Find your favorite influencers, ask your friends, find, find your community. And it, you know, and it and it's multiple communities if you're online, right? So find those people that you want to follow, that you want to learn from, who inspire you. Don't um, you know, focus on inspiration, not competition. It's not a competition. Don't be competitive. So you don't you <clears throat> the people you want to follow, you want to be informed and inspired and affirmed by. You don't want to feel like you know, uh, I like to say that, you know, when you grow and when you change, you don't have to feel bad, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to go find people who are going to support, inform, inspire, and affirm you, right? And and that's the goal of, of what we're doing with our program. Um, and also, um, you may want other people to join you, right? So other people in your family, you may want to join you. You want them to be your people too when you go through this journey. And if and if they're interested and they're on board, great. But if they're not, 
do it anyway, right? Find your community elsewhere and be the inspiration for your family, be available um, and share, right? But don't let that stop you. Um, you you have to go forward because this is about your personal transformation and you may be a catalyst for them at a later point, right? But it should not stop you if, if your family right now can't be part of that circle. Love it, love it, love it. Old saying that my parents used to always kind of say is birds of a feather flock together. Right. Yeah. And so you, and so, so you, need, you need that flock. You need that community. And I mean, that's one of the things we talk about inside of our platform is really the power of resiliency that in part is formed through community. And there's yeah. there's a wonderful say that was done at Morehouse looking at community resiliency and mm -hmm. looking at despite the disparities, despite some of the 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 lack of access in the communities, that there still was a positive effect on cardiovascular outcomes. Um, because of community and resilience. And so forming your your people, getting your people, right? And getting behind so, is so important. Yeah. It's so important. I had my mother and my sister, I, I mean, when I went vegan um, and told them about the Dick Gregory lecture, they came on board. We did it together. And then, wow, you know, I found that there was this big Black vegan community in D.C. that I knew nothing about before I decided to go vegan, right? Yeah. So I had a community. So it made it so easy, um, made it much easier, I should say, because um, I don't want to give people, you know, the false impression that it's going to be easy. It's going to be what it is for you, but it's yeah. easier um, and with the supportive community. Right. For sure. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I love that. And even you throw another twist on it is that, you know, obviously the message of health, the message of wellness, of plant based, of vegan, of lifestyle is for everyone across the board. Yeah. But there is nothing more powerful than seeing people who look like you, who yeah. understand your tastes, your preferences, your culture that now you can connect with, that you can commune with. And that's I think that's once again, that's another powerful component of this program. Yeah, I, absolutely. And we need to, you know, black uh, black folks are where I entered veganism. Right. So through Dick Gregory and through this community in D.C. and uh when when we had you know this is back in the late 80s and the early 90s and veganism was everywhere when we were going to anti-war rallies there were vegan food trucks downtown on the mall right there were um, vegan soul food restaurants all kinds of uh, I, I had my first vegan ice cream at a black family owned um they made their own vegan ice cream you know a uh, restaurant there was vegan caribbean food of all kinds so mm -hmm. Um, it was it was just it was a given, you know what I mean? So we, you didn't have to bring your food. You didn't have to worry about it. And I think I took that for granted that that was available everywhere and it wasn't. And so this notion that that um, <clears throat> this notion that veganism is a is a white thing is just foreign to me. Right. People assume that that is a question that I that I understand and that I experience. And it's not I, I it's actually the opposite. And, and I also know our history of being, you know, change makers and leaders at Seventh-day Adventists and beyond, right, in veganism from, um, you know, the 1800s on forward. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's very important to be in a community of folks who look like you, but also to know that history, right, and to know that we are leaders in it. That's right. And, and, and speak to as far as a lot of people think, oh, people of African descent aren't really doing the whole vegan thing. And that's the contrary. It's totally the contrary. So right now, the latest stat that we have is that um, it's from the Pew Research Center. And they did a study in 2016 that was pretty widely covered mm. that, that shared that um, the fastest growing vegan demographic right. in the US are African American. That demographic is African Americans, right? And um, among those African-Americans, there are more women. So uh, black women are actually the face of veganism. Now, this is not a surprise in terms of this overall statistic, because when the vegetarian resource group was doing these surveys in the early 2000s, they found the same thing. They found that 3%, so the, the Pew Center study found that 8% of African Americans are they are vegan or vegetarian as compared to 3% of Americans overall. 
back in the day in the early 2000s when VRG, the Vegetarian Resource Group, was doing these surveys, these phone surveys at the time, um, it was the same. Twice as many, there were twice as many African Americans who were vegan, and they were only doing vegan, not vegan and vegetarian, than white Americans. So this has been consistent, right, over the decades. So it's not a surprise to me, but most people don't know that, right? Um, they assume the, the opposite. And so it's really, but I'm, but you know, I'd lead with this. So I don't lead with lack. I don't, with, 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 um, um, you know, I center us always as, as leaders, as change makers. Um, and you know, the stats are, the stats back that up. And so that's important to share that we have been doing this. There's always been a river of black folks who have been vegan and vegetarian and pushing this movement forward. Um, it's all, it's been tied to our activism, right? Um, it's been tied to our health. It's been tied to our faith. Um, and it's always been there alongside this larger ocean of black folks who are omnivores. I mean, 8% vegan and vegetarian means still 92% are omnivores, right? So we got a lot of work to do, but we've, but 8%, is still huge and you know we've been part of of helping to expand that number over the over the decades our, our the three of us and our colleagues and you know in this work and so yes it's super important to tell to talk about that all the time to let people to ground people in their in center themselves in this that they're trying to do that it's not yeah. foreign it is who we are for sure for sure i mean that that's you know as a a tangent to that that's part of the reason why we shaped our our platform in the way in which we did is we wanted to give a little history to let yeah. people understand the why that it's not unique this didn't just happen and so that's what you're kind of speaking to is that this didn't just pop up with you with tracy or with columbus or with eric this this right. happened long before us you right. know the root the roots of healthy eating and living um, inside the African-American community didn't originate with us at all. And that's right. powerful. Right. I think, and of course, we can go back to, you know, we can go back to the continent, you know, of, of us being plant centered, not plant exclusive, but plant centered and plant strong. And then I know y'all talk about, you know, of course, your audience knows about what happened, what our what our food, the transformation that happened during enslavement. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. But yes, we can take it. You know, we have we have consistently been plant centered, plant strong, plant focused. So this is not new. And, and I think something you said before is what you know I would highlight, and that is it is connected to um, many aspects of who we are, why we do this. I mean, you mentioned activism, um, yeah. and I would reiterate faith. I think one of the reasons African Americans have a higher rate, and it's and obviously as Christians, um, there's a strong biblical reason. I mean, I love when I can talk to other Christians and show them from the Bible why it is that I don't eat meat. And many right. of them are, are dumbfounded when you show them that for the first 2000 years, nobody ate meat. God didn't get permission to eat meat till after the flood. And so, you know, that, that all is very powerful, but um, it, it's also like Rastafarians, you know, my family yeah. is Jamaican, a lot of Rastafarians don't eat meat. Um, mm -hmm. um, the black Hebrew Israelites, when I used to go to their restaurant yes. in Atlanta and so yeah. forth, there's a lot, there's, it is a strong connection to faith. And I think that is what differentiates um, a, a lot of the understanding in our community from other communities, because we understand that the body temple concept and yes. that what we eat impacts it. It's more than just a physical thing. So, you know, yes. um, as popular as the term vegan is, one of the reasons, one of the things we we often do is to break it down to people say whole food and plant based. Yes, and absolutely. we do that for the reason that we're trying to get people to understand because i'm just seeing your your stuff i know that that's literally what you do you're trying to get people back to the ground back to earth yeah. back to simple foods that are not processed and this is and ultimately what's deep is as i think our people and i think what you're doing is critical to it as they awaken around food and and healthier foods there's going to be an awakening spiritually as well mm. um i think it'll go hand in hand and because your mind clears up um, your thinking clears up. There is another level to this that we don't often talk about, but that is real. And I think why so many black people under the stress of living in America, proportionately, so many more choose this lifestyle because I think it feeds not just their 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 stress fighting, but it yeah. feeds their spirit. Yes, yes, it definitely it definitely has been that for me. I mean, it's definitely 
strengthen my my spirituality. And, you know, it doesn't I mean, it. and yes, absolutely, because most of us um, are so faith centered. Right. And uh, as African-Americans in the diaspora as well, that 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 that's definitely true. Like you can't you know, these these things are connected for us. Exactly. You know, there's no, there's not a disconnect. And I think that's why, yes, so many of us latch on to it because we see all of the connections. Or if somebody makes the connections, we get it, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, but if you're and if you're not faith based, if that's not um, part of your life, there are other connections that are made as well. You know, yeah. there's social justice, there's activism, there's one, there's climate, there's environment, yeah. there's so many connections that we just logically get because of common sense and because we're smart, right? We had to we have to navigate all of these different things and in, in, in systemic white supremacy and patriarchy, right? We know from a very young age how to make these connections and how to see through the BS that is, you know, the backwardness, the, mm. the, the other, the, the, the craziness, right? That people are telling us is normal, you know, but our, but our minds and our bodies are telling us, you know, are not. And so we, ha we learn from a young age to see through that. And so when you when you talk to people and make these connections, this is how I teach it, because this is how Dick Gregory taught it, to, taught, lectured it, you know, lectured and taught it to me in, in 1986. He made all of these connections. And I was like, OK, I got it. I understand food now. I get it. And so for me, it was just like, OK, so I want to do this. How am I going to do it? But it's but yeah, I think when you show people all of these other things, it, it just drops into an understanding um, that a complex understanding that we live with and we, you know, that are that we under, that we navigate every day anyway. Love it. Love it. I, I think that's a perfect transition into knowing your worth, uh, that yes. you're worth it, knowing <laughs> that you're worth it. Right. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that so important? Especially it's, for, I'm not going to say just call out women. I think it's for all of us, for every, yeah, every yeah. person of any gender or ethnic background, knowing that you're worth it. You're worth it. You're worth it. So what goes? So the caption that goes with this one is actually pretty large. Uh, it's it's pretty long. And um, um, basically, I was out just to really briefly. You know, I can talk. We we <laughs> that was established in our last conversation. So just cut. <laughs> Just cut me off and say, mm -hmm. okay. We, we want to hear you. <laughs> so, but just really short, um, I was uh, I was in grad school and I was, <clears throat> this was 2001 and I was already vegan for 13, 15 years, something like that. And I was waiting for a coworker um, and I was uh, talking to her colleague and, she, and he, while I was waiting for her and he brought up veganism, I never bring it up rarely outside of, you know, I mean, I'm not a conversation starter for me. So anyway, he I guess he knew I was vegan from her. And he was like, how can you do that when nobody else is doing it? And that was his that was his argument. Right. And he was a brother. <laughs> and so I was just like, black. I was just thinking in my mind, we're black. Don't we do a lot of things that everybody else doesn't do? I mean, how is that like that? That's not a non starter for me. Yeah, that's, a, that's a poor, I mean, poor argument. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, and, and just because other people aren't doing it doesn't, doesn't invalidate the concept, right? Um, and so, you know, for you to do it when others aren't around you aren't doing it is a decision you make. It doesn't invalidate the veganism, right? You're either going to do it or you're not, but that's not the reason not to do it for me. <clears throat> and so that's that's what that's the story that I shared about the sense of self worth, right? Mm -hmm. If I had decided in um, in that 1986 lecture when I was a sophomore at Amherst College that Dick Gregory gave because our Black Student Union brought him, he decided to talk about veganism. We didn't bring him there to talk about that. Um, but he decided to go vegan, as your viewers, I'm sure, know, because of the impact, of, because of the influence of nonviolence during the civil rights movement. He was a right hand person to King and he extended that to food. Most people weren't doing that um, around him. Right. He chose to do it. 
And when he came to my campus, he'd already been doing it for 20 years and had this big empire. Um, when I heard that lecture and I decided that I wanted to explore it and go vegan, none of my friends at college had that same reaction. And it was fine. You know, I still wanted to do it. And fortunately, my mom and sister wanted to do it with me. And I had this black vegan community. So it made it, um, you know, I had so much support. It, did, it made it easier, but I would have done it anyway, right? And so, um, I mean, I had already decided to do it. And if I hadn't, if I had, been, if I had waited for most people around me to do it, I still wouldn't be vegan because most people aren't doing it. It's you, you. This sense of self worth is so, so important, right? You are worth it. If there is something in your mind that is saying, "I want to try this. I want to go vegan. I'm just going to do the 21 days. I'm not going to say I'm going to go vegan. I'm just going to do it for 21 days." Mm -hmm. If there's something inside you that's saying that. Follow that. That's for you, right? Follow that. You Absolutely. focus on you, and that's what that that's what that is for me. That's what that means. Love it, love it, love it. I mean, the way I I agree that makes so much sense. I mean, I think just to add that, to that, just briefly, I know one of the things I see a lot of times is I see men taking care of their cars better than they take care of their bodies. Yeah. I see women taking yeah. care of their their whatever the the style of purse is yeah. that they're carrying the louis or their ring or the or whatever. Their cars. I'm in yeah. the car. yeah. cars too as well <laughs> no, you're right you're right i'm not trying to yeah, yeah, I know. They're, getting it, they're getting it detailed they will not put yeah. anything inside of it but the premium gas right yeah. but then they yeah. drive up and put junk inside their bodies and they're surprised when the body breaks down when yeah. the body now has cracks and aches with it but they would they would not be surprised if they were doing dysfunctional things to their cars, their purse, mm -hmm. to their 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 perishable yeah. items there. Yeah. So I think it's that's how I see value. And I tell people, you have to value you. Mm -hmm. You have to, you're worth it. You are truly worth it. You're true, you're worth the investment, you're mm -hmm. worth the time, you're worth the commitment to check out 10 million black vegan women <laughs> is what you're worth, right? That's exactly. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Love it, love it. All right, let's see what's what's next you have up here for us. Start where you are. Start where you are. Start, start where, where you are. are. So you, it doesn't. It means just start now, right? So um, if you don't have whatever you have access to, whatever your skill level is, you don't have to wait to level up to get started. You can start right now. So that you know, whatever that means for you. So if that means that you can, you know, add some frozen vegetable, dark leafy greens, start with some frozen dark leafy greens, right? If you can't do organic, don't do organic. Start with some whole grains, start with some beans, some nuts, some seeds, some bread, some berries. If you don't have fresh fruit, do frozen fruit, right? Start where you are. You don't, that's really, really important with anything really, right? That's just common sense. Um, that's a common, um, I shouldn't say common sense, but that's a common guideline that you will see when you're trying to start a new practice or a new habit. You just get started, right? You just start where you are. And in, and this is, this is no different. So I do, like you, promote whole food plant-based and cooking at home cooking from scratch as much as you can. Um, but there's nothing wrong with adding packaged, um, you know, like dried beans, grains, frozen vegetables, all of that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you ain't growing everything. You're not, you know, you got to shop for some things. And so use what's available and just get started. Yes. Yes. That's good advice. It is huge. Yeah. And I think it's consistent with like a lot of the, the self-help literature out there, atomic habits, small habits. You yeah. start small, make something that's achievable, that's obtainable, that you may say, you know what, I'm not ready to give up my burger and fries, whatever etiology it may be from, I'm going to at least start with a salad before it. Yeah. Hey, I'm not willing to give up whatever the soda is, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to go ahead and drink some water before I have the soda. You're yeah. going to start with whatever fits with your paradigm and begin that process of not ending there, but continuing on and, and saying a goal, that a goal there. So I think it's, I think it's huge starting where you're at. Yeah. You have to start with adding and that's a mindset. You don't start with what you take away. You start with what you add. 
right? Yeah. So add, add, add. What can I add? Can I add a salad? Can I add some greens to my smoothie? Can I add, you know, depending on where you are, can I, add, you know, what can you add when it comes to these types of foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and nuts? What can I add to what I'm already doing right now? And I love that. I love that from a mental standpoint, right? Because that's going to be enriching to your body and your heart. So I'm not negative. I'm not putting negative thoughts of I can't do this. I right. can't have this. That now you're craving everything you said you can't have. Thank but you. instead, <laughs> flip the switch and say, I can have whatever I want. I'm going to go ahead and add this to what I'm eating right now. Yes. Uh, so that's huge. Yes, absolutely. It's true. All right. All right. Let's see here. This is the one. We love this. Yes. I'm so glad. We are, you know, oh my gosh. There's so much we could say about eat whole foods, but that's the healthiest way to do veganism is to eat whole food plant-based. And if you, uh, if, if folks follow you, they follow me, um, Milton, uh, Michael Greger, uh, just so many folks, right, who talk, there, there are a lot of us who our cookbooks are whole food plant-based what you know our guides everything that we talk about is is whole food plant-based um that's the healthiest way to eat whole grains fruits vegetables beans nuts and seeds those are ingredients that make thousands and thousands and thousands of delicious meals yes you, you, yes. Eating, you, you healthy and delicious right and they're the basics they're the basis of cuisines all over the world Right. So this is what I mean, a dead bird doesn't taste good. It's it's seasonings and flour and sauce. Right. Those are usually plant based. I mean, even flour and oil are plant based. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this isn't foreign to you. You are you know, you, you do know the concept of fruit and vegetables and beans and nuts and grains. You just want your grains to be whole grains. What's happening, so this is the healthiest way to eat. It's best to cook from scratch. All of that is important. Um, and there's nothing wrong with leading with that, right? I, you know, I can't tell you how many people have told me to kind of tiptoe around that, you know? And I'm just like, no, you have to tell people what is healthiest and then help them get there, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Some people can get there right away. Some people is gonna take some time, but it doesn't mean you don't tell them, right? That's right. um, we we don't have time to tiptoe around these things. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I never did, but we shouldn't. We if we have that information, we should tell people what's the healthiest way to eat. Um, and you know that. Crazy. Don't you think it's mainly about love and how you really convey the information? Yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. beating someone up, what are you eat that for? You need to eat this. <laughs> Right? It's, not, it's never going to be well received. It's all about the, how the message is delivered. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so important. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eric. No, no, I, I was just going to jump in and say, and another thing I think is you have to tie these things with the benefit. So you can't just say, don't eat this. You got to say, yeah. listen, what I, I mean, as a physician, what I say to patients is if you, you know, your diabetes is out of control, there's a way you can reverse this by what you eat. It's a totally different paradigm now when I say, listen, if you don't eat fatty foods, fried foods, you know, animal fats, you know, to name a few things, this will help reverse it. Now, they, you're right. They may, they, well, most of them, may, they might not be able to do everything, but a lot of them are going to say, okay, what can I do? What's reasonable for me to do? Um, there's a great study I was just reading. I just read um, a, one of these books on sugar, and they, they were there's a study in oh, Sweden yeah. where they did, they did, um, um, one group of guys, they gave a sugar-filled soda for three months. Another group, they gave um, diet soda. Another group, they gave milk. Another group, they gave water. The group that got soda gained 30-something pounds in three months. The group that got diet soda gained like six pounds in three months. The group that got milk either stayed the same or gained like three pounds. The group that got water like dropped 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. When you present that to people, it, it's not the same as saying, hey, don't, you shouldn't eat soda, soda. You shouldn't drink soda, soda is bad for you. Right. It's very different when you hear that because now you're like, Wait a minute. You mean to tell me I could have a 60 pound swing in three months and, you know, it changes the way people get it. And I think yeah. what I like about the way you present it is I think you 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 couch it in all of that. Um, you're yeah. you're trying to benefit people. You're not simply trying to tell people what not to eat. You're trying to couch it in the benefits. And what's yeah. beautiful is this, it's a collective benefit. You yeah. know, when you say millions of black women. That's a collective benefit. That's even many more millions of black children, 
many yeah. more millions of black grandchildren. It is a domino effect. Absolutely. Um, and that's why it's so beautiful and why the benefits have to be a part of our sales pitch. Because yes. a lot of people don't know. They've never connected food with disease. That's this profound is so to me. This is people, I didn't, right? Growing up, I mean, before I heard about I, I, <laughs> I, I had no idea. Nobody told us, right? It doesn't benefit um, the, in, the food industry to tell us that, obviously. But you're right. You know, for some reason, I was, I, I have a lot of, uh, I shouldn't say for some reason, because I was an omnivore and I hated vegetables growing up and I hated healthy food. There's nothing anyone can tell me about the fact that, you know, thinking that they can't do it because I was the last person who I ever thought or anybody okay. thought would be doing this, eating this way and have this be my profession. I hated healthy food. And my mother, we did, you know, we had healthier omni omnivore food. So I was familiar with healthier omnivore food, but I didn't like it. Um, and so I have, because of that, because I was that person, I have a lot of grace, you know, around yeah. that. I'm not the person to come to if you want, if you're a white person and you want to like unlearn white supremacy, I don't have patience for that. I'm not the person to come to if you're a man and you want to unlearn patriarchy, unless you're my partner. Otherwise, I don't have patience for that. Other people do. But I am a vegan who has patience for omnivores, right? And that grace. And I don't know how that happened. I mean, this is probably why that's the case. And I'm still doing it after 35 years. So, so, and I wanted to be an activist, right? I wanted to do activist kind of work to, to help liberate Black people. And so it was just figuring out what that was. And as it turns out, it's veganism. I thought I might have been a lawyer, a judge, an investigative reporter. I'm a, I'm a nutritionist. I'm a public health nutritionist and author. This is how I, this is activist work for me, right? So I have compassion and grace around this. Um, and um, yeah, so I, so I say that to say that it is really important. I'm, I'm all about how my approach to this and, and, and being, again, informative, inspirational, and, and affirming for people. Yeah. I mean, but why that's so important, I mean, you know this, but just to kind of say it out loud is the fact that studies have shown people beat themselves up. There's more negative thoughts circulating inside of our own heads, our own mind. Yeah. We don't need to hear it externally about how we're not uh, matching up to the expectations. There's enough of that. Um, so encouraging, but really focused in, in helping folks to move towards an improved state is so powerful. Right. There's so it's so powerful. And that's what's needed inside of our society. It's what's needed right now inside of our community in order to kind of make this change. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely agree. And that and that community aspect of it um, is just so important. And I and, you know, I know that one 10 million, a goal of 10 million black women overall and one million every year is a huge, huge goal. Um, and you know, you know, folks think, you know, some folks are like, she's crazy. I'm going to just wait and see, you know, and then some folks are like, I'm going to help her get there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all doing this work together. So we're all, you know, we're all helping to grow this number. Um, but I wanted to, you know, say the number. I actually was going to say 1 million. And a friend of mine said, mm, I think you should do 10 million, you know, and I, you know, and I thought about it and I said, I've been doing this work for 35 years. I'm 55. I can see myself going hard and strong for a good 10 years. I'll probably be doing it for as long as I'm here and alive. But as a per career every day, right, mm -hmm. for the next 10 years, if I'm going to continue, what what is a goal that's worthy of that, of that work, you know, of that, of continuing for me after all these years? And what do I want to see? What in my imagination would be fabulous if one out of every two Black women in this country alone, not to mention globally, is vegan? What would, what would that look like for our communities, right? And so I just said, I'm, I'm, it's out here. I'm naming it, I'm claiming it, and that's what I'm working towards. And 
If we get there in 10 years, great. If we get halfway or a third way there, that's millions of people in their circles, their children, their grandchildren, their partners, their, their, their friends and other loved ones. It's worthy. It's worth it. And that's the key. And I, yeah, go ahead, I, Eric. At, I think you, you also have to understand, or at least be encouraged by the math of, the, of generations. Mm -hmm. So when you speak, you know, one woman who um, accepts this, like I said before, I mean, this will trickle through her generations. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, so you're going to, you, you, even if you never get to count the 10 million, you will, by God's grace, you will reach the 10 million. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because over time, it will ripple into that 10 million, which is why your friend was wise to give you the counsel <laughs> to go for 10 million. And, uh, and again, and, and I love Bible promises. That's what I used to put on the other <laughs> side of those, those index cards. And it says, you know, one of the promises is uh, that you get is um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you speak becomes mm -hmm. a reality. Mm -hmm. um, and so speaking it out loud, sp sh uh, sharing it around means that it is going to transform. And the beautiful thing is one woman, you will save, if you save the life of just one woman, everything you do is worth it. Absolutely. Everything you've done is worth it if it was to save one woman's life. Thank you for that. I received that blessing, uh, that all of that. And I think that's true. And I, you know, I, I already, I, I, I really love to hear that and to be, to be graced by that for the beginning of the year. Um, so thank you for that. I feel like I don't, I don't know just as, just as you two don't know how many people we already have affected, right? We know we have affected people. We don't know those ripple effects. If something happened and we stop tomorrow, our le our legacy is already sealed, right? So I'm I'm quite aware of I'm quite aware of and and proud of that. Um, and you know I want to I want to I want to leave an institutional legacy um, also with this as a nonprofit organization, so that when I stop or when I'm gone, it continues. There is a um, there's a lot of money being poured into um, you know, processed food companies, Ooh, processed sure. food yeah. startups, right? Tons and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? And that money could be, some of that money could go to nonprofit organizations like ours, right? Um, that are doing this work uh, and have been doing this work can go to individuals who are doing this work, um, uh, organized nonprofits, for-profit businesses that are actually on the ground helping people to become vegan, you, you know? So uh, I want, so I, you know, I'm out here as an organization that uh, is proven, you know, in terms of the, the, um, the work that I've already done. We're fortunate that we have backers already. We've gotten substantial funding. We're going to increase the funding. Um, and, you know, so that we can really build this movement. That's what we're focused on for, for 2022. Um, but people need to understand that this is, this to me is more important than these products, right? This work that we're doing and this funding needs to come to us so that we can do this work. And um, that's the kind of institutional legacy I want to live. I want to leave as well with this. With this, this is a new nonprofit organization, and I was a nonprofit director back in the '90s. So this is in my wheelhouse, um, and so I just return to it because this is this is how this is what I want to leave um, other people to continue to do when I'm when I'm gone. It's an incredible legacy you're setting up, and man, I I'm honored and privileged to to even know you and share a, share a panel discussion with you now twice in, in one calendar year. I you're love it. My honor. <laughs> but let's let's wrap things up. This powerful conversation. Oh, take set. us out. Take okay. us out on point number eight, and we're gonna All go right. out with a blast here as people go into this 2022 making a change. The two two. Right. Yeah. Explore new recipes. Absolutely. Now we're talking about the food. Right. So um, it's really, really important 
that as you transition to veganism, you understand that you might fall into a rut just like you did as an omnivore. You might get bored, you might want to stop, you might want to go back to those, you know, to those other things. You have to continue to explore new recipes and that can be simple, you know, all whole food plant-based, but that can be other types of cuisines that are not familiar to you. Um, and, you know, they're world cuisines that are plant-centered. Um, and so it's always important, even after 35 years, I am still exploring new recipes all the time because I love to eat and, you know, and I love good food. And so when I, and I get into ruts, I get tired of cooking greens. I get tired of washing greens, right? Um, and so I'm looking for new things to do all the time because, um, you know, of course I'm not going back, but I just want people to understand that, you know, there is lots to explore and um, you should continue to explore new recipes and be excited about food. You know, this is not a deprivation type of thing that you're doing. It's, it's a, it's a, there's abundant, delicious food out here that's also healthy. Love it. Love it. I'm getting hungry thinking about it right now. Yeah. You know, about all the different <laughs> cuisines. Eric talking about the Jamaican food that you didn't yeah. talk about this time. But you know, we go all around the world and it's just the flavors are so are there. It's all about the flavor. The seasoning. It's all about the seasoning. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes, it's, yes, it's, yes. it's so good. I love I I like I travel to eat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. I do. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, food is culture. It's who we are, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and people think by adopting a healthier lifestyle that you're depriving yourself and you're giving up that culture. Yeah. And, and why would anyone do that? Like, why would you want to live? Why would you want to say for the rest of my life, I'm going to be mad about what I have to eat and I'm not going to like it. Like, who would choose that? Exactly. Just, you know, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Mm hmm. Well, tell us, tell us where people can find you. We already talked about, tell us again about the website. Tell us again about what they can do to be a part of this movement and to join in and share information. So our website is 10millionblackveganwomen.org. I know that's a mouthful. It's the number 10, the word million, blackveganwomen.org. Um, they can go to that website and sign up. Our next program, our next free 21 day program starts February 20th. They can also find us on Instagram at 10 million BVW, um, or they can find me at, at, uh, by any greens. So by any greens or 10 million BVW, either one. Love it. Love it. Power. Let me just say nothing yeah. is more brilliant. Nothing in the world is more brilliant than by any greens necessary. I, know, I love that. I, I have to say, I, I, I like you, you, like homage is owed you. That is that is dope. That's just dope. That is dope. It thank is. You. Thank That's you. Dope. Thank you. In that fact, when you when you that. come out with your clothing line to match all of this, I will be the first to buy your buy any greens necessary. Hashtag. With a silhouette of Malcolm holding like a broccoli or something. I don't know you, <laughs> yes, you know it. 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 It's coming. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Well, we definitely. I we're gonna be greedy and we're gonna have to have you back on at some point in the future again um, because it's always such a joy and a pleasure just going. I know that everyone who's tuned in is enriched and they feel probably empowered to go about 2022. The double twos, right? Yeah. And making this uh, impactful change. So thank you again. Eric, any last words as we sign off? No, I just want to encourage everybody that this year, you know, we always say new year, new you, and we say all those things, but I want people to remember that it's not just the beginning of the year that's an opportunity to be reborn or to start over. Um, you don't need a special day. You don't need a beginning of a month. Um, I think what we learned tonight is that our own value, the, uh, our inherent value, the value that God has placed on us is mm -hmm. enough for us to make the change, for us to to try and do better. Um, and it's not just for us. Uh, we talked a lot about generations, um, but how will our children fare? Uh, the world is becoming a more unhealthy place to be. Um, yeah. So we have to be centers of health and of health excellence, each one of us, um, especially in our community. So I encourage everybody, even if you don't start in January, February, March, doesn't matter. You know, it when the time matter. comes, Look Tracy's uh, organization up, jump in, knee deep, and um, and get started. 
Thank you. Thank you, Columbus. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Danette. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm so grateful to be on your show and um, for you all to be involved in the movement. I'm so honored. And this was just fabulous and a wonderful, wonderful way to, to kick off the new year for me personally. So thank you. Yes. All right. Everyone, we'll see you next time. Check us out next month. There'll be information about when we're coming back with the show. We have to live up to this bar. We set the bar high 2022. <laughs> we're ready to go. Take care. Bye.